Hi, today's TechnoBear here. Today I'm doing the A Modular Challenge and I thought I'd do something a little bit different. Um, it's about sequencing, uh, but I don't actually have much sequencing in the A Modular. So I thought I'd keep within the theme of doing it in the A Modular by actually creating my own sequencer. And I've called that Terrell. Now, uh, Terrell is based on my ARB mod, and we're going to talk about that a little bit more after I've shown you it in action. So have a little listen to it, and then I'll talk to you later. Okay, so that was Terrell. What I thought I'd do now is take a little bit of a break and actually talk to you about what Terrell is, what inspired me, how I created it. Um, so that I'll then show another video and you'll be able to see a little bit more perhaps what I'm actually doing, um, rather than just look at twiddling knobs and go, oh, okay. <laughs> so, Terrell basically is a module that's built on my ARD mod, DIY module, which I'll include some details um, in the links below. Basically, it's a very simple DIY module built on an Arduino Nano, a couple of DACs, which has four pots, four buttons, four LEDs, four CV in, four CV out. And Terrell itself is actually a program. I thought this time what I would do is for the patch challenge is explore the idea of creating not only wires for the modular and patching it all together, but also creating software to make the patch. Uh, so a hybrid solution, and that's what I decided to do. It's um, inspired really by two parts, mainly by uh, the Krell patch, which um, by Todd Barton, which is inspired in itself by the Forbidden Planet music. Um, and it's also inspired by the Turing machine by Tom Whitwell. So we've got uh, two parts really to talk about. The Krell patch what I needed to do was um, the envelopes I've got uh, don't allow me CV control over attack, decay, and end of cycle, uh, which you need to basically create the movement in the crowd patch. And the end of cycle helps you to know when to change the pitch. I haven't got those. The new modules do have uh, end of cycle and CV control, for, but I just don't have those. So I needed that, and I needed the quantizer. Um, then the true machine... What I liked about that is that it's a concept of using random data but being able to control it. So let's look at the, the trail and we can see how that works. So what we can see first of all is up at CV trig inputs at the top. These are taking in random data from a noise source um, and it's got a trig which is basically when to sample it. Now you'll see during the videos that I'm playing down at the bottom with the dual attenuator to shape the noise that's actually going in to this so I can decide whether or not I want higher notes, lower notes, shorter notes, etc. But they're still random. Uh, I can actually use specific voltages, in which case the module becomes like a sequencer, really. Okay, so we've got random data coming in, and basically on the other side we've got pitch and envelope coming out. So uh, I can then just drive a VCA and oscillators. Now, the knobs are the important bits. Um, Basically, we have four. The bottom two are used for the length of the buffer. I've just leaving these static, but that can be altered. Um, it's quite nice. You can get slight different repetitions, etc. Um, 
The top two are the change knobs, and these are very important. Now, there's two sides to the Durrell machine. We've got the pitch side and the envelope side. Both are using random data. Now, the change work knob works the same on both sides. When it's at 12 o'clock, the buffers are frozen. In other words, it just repeats what it's got constantly. As we um, twist it to anti-clockwise, what we get is we get increasingly more random data entering the buffer. Um, so it's changing. If we go, however, counterclockwise past, uh, sorry, clockwise past 12 o'clock, then what it does is it actually just shuffles the data increasingly between um, every time that it needs to. So that's changing it still, but it's changing the same notes, for example, all the time. Okay, that's what they do. Now we've got a second level of uh, behind the scenes here, is that that's going on for CV1, uh, CV1. In the background, we have a second set. So we have another two Turing machines running, and those basically are doing exactly the same thing. However, what happens is it takes the settings of the knobs when, and the buffer when you press the duplicate button. So you'll see I keep on copying them over to the second machine. Now what's interesting is if I actually have the knobs at uh, change knobs at 12 o'clock, both buffers when I press the duplicate button, both buffers will say play the same thing essentially. Now that's interesting, but if I have them so that they are uh, doing random data, then the second buffer is actually getting a different random source and it's also deciding randomly when to change things as well. So the buffers become out of sync. Then what happens, perhaps even a little bit more controllable, is if I turn it, as I said, clockwise and I do the duplicate, then what happens is it's actually just shuffling the data. So now the, the two buffers are playing the same notes perhaps, but they're playing them in different order. Or if I'm doing it on the envelope, then they might be using similar shaped envelopes, but they're again using them in different orders. So the fun part about this, well, of course it's random. So some of the time it's, it's creating absolute noise and it's not interesting, but other times it creates little gels. And the, the fun thing is, I was playing with it last night and just every now and then it would just come up with something very interesting. Um, and you could lock down the buffers and you could just tweak it a little bit. And then, of course, it would escape and you, it'd be gone, fleeting. And that's when you wish you'd recorded it. But never mind, that's life. Anyway, perhaps a little insight will later see a little bit more of what I'm actually doing um, in the next part of the video. Thanks, have fun. Mm -hmm.